What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jacob Potato, and I have just finished watching the Xbox reveal show thing and whatever, and I must say, I am ridiculously disappointed with the whole affair. To quote my friend, um, Andrew Ritchie, about this, by the way, in case he ends up watching this and gets at me about it, I did not know that the Xbox had become a very fancy digital freeview box. Very expensive digital freeview box. I've just spent the last two hour and a bit watching this, expecting so many games to fly out at me and hit me in the face that I would not believe it. But I am severely disappointed about it all. There was nothing that excited me. There was nothing that made me want to buy this console. The PS4 had more interesting things going on for it. And with that, I'm going to go through a couple of the points. Well, there's a page of points that I made. <laughs> So, this should make for a nice video anyway. So, a couple of the first points that I made, it, it literally looks the same. It looks the same as the old Xbox, except it's more square. When I say the old Xbox, I mean the slimline Xbox. It looks more square, and it has a couple of different features about it. But it literally looks the same. Nothing innovative about that. The controller itself looks ridiculously nice. I like the shape of it. It interests me a bit. It's got a new sleek design, and I like that whole thing that apparently the rumble system has been moved to the joysticks now instead of the whole controller. That sounds kind of cool. Interface is the same as Windows 8. I thought it looked the same, but it pretty much is Windows 8. Why would they redesign the whole Xbox interface when they're trying to interface it with this whole Microsoft Surface thing? I don't know. So they've made that the same as Windows 8, and there's also this whole thing about including Kinect really deeply in with it. They kept saying Connect throughout the whole presentation, so they're obviously trying to push the Connect more. And the fact that actually now that you have to have the Connect running for the Xbox to work is a stupid idea as well. The quick start looked really good. The whole quick translation between the TV and the internet and the games, that looked quite good. Whether it actually will work like that, not entirely sure yet, but it obviously uses a solid state drive, so it's a 500 gig solid state drive possibly. I don't know. So it took 30 minutes for them to show any sort of game, not even gameplay, it was all pre-rendered stuff and that is not good. When you are watching a conference about games and about a games console you want to see gameplay rather than pre-rendered stuff that honestly looks about as good as the Halo ODST trailer did back in the day. That actually looked better than the Call of Duty trailer that we've seen tonight. I'm going to get started on Call of Duty in a while. So just hold out for that. Um, going through the specs. So the this whole Xbox One, they've kind of gone the same way the Apple did with the iPad. Instead of naming it the iPad 3, they named it the Xbox One. Meh, I don't like the name. Um, a lot of Kinect, a lot of Smart Glass. 8 gig of RAM, okay, fair enough, that's kind of good. And it's got Blu-ray. How many years is behind Sony are they with that? Runs Xbox and runs Windows. And they have a third operating system to combine the two together. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. And they said this console is like using rocket science innovation. It doesn't take rocket science to make a good game. It takes a good team and a good story and good gameplay. You don't need rocket science to make a good game. So why the... Uh, whatever. Uh, controller. A lot of integrated Kinect stuff. Uh, raise the controller to raise the shield. PS3 done something like that. The six axes and it's gone completely out the window with PS4. They've got rid of the six axes all together. Um, connect. Three, 300,000 servers. Could that mean more dedicated servers? I don't know. A lot of cloud storage. Uh, FA, I don't like cloud storage at all. Embel PBR and editor. Seen that common really. This one piqued my interest a bit. More players and bigger and better matchmaking. Now that could be good. That means more players in a game, bigger maps. Unless you're Call of Duty where the maps are getting smaller. They're kind of going the way of PC a bit there. Battlefield 3 can have up to 32 people in a team. Whereas Battlefield on the, uh, on the Xbox can only have, what, 16 in a game or something stupid like that. It's ridiculous. So hopefully they're going that way with uh, matchmaking and whatnot. Uh, so the first people on the stage were EA. Mm. That's awkward. And they started talking about how they wanted to make fun games and change everything. I didn't realise their policies had changed to make fun and interesting games and try not to be Call of Duty. I wonder how much they had to pay to get out before Call of Duty, I suppose. Call of Duty paid more to get on last. They had their stupid interviews with their sports stars. And a lot of silly sports games from EA really didn't interest me at all. FIFA potentially only on the Xbox? 
Mm, that that could be a bit of a game changer, I suppose. 35 minutes in, they actually started to release some content. A lot of pre-rendered cutscenes. They looked pretty, Forza looked pretty nice. Meh, nothing else really though, because they're all pre-rendered and as I said, they don't look that interesting. They, they look the same as the pre-rendered cutscenes from this generation, so why don't they just show some gameplay so we can actually see the changes? More talking about the pre-rendered stuff and all the potential changes when we get to Call of Duty. I have so much to talk about there. Uh, connect. Force of Five looks pretty. Effects on characters like wear and tear. Okay, that sounds kinda cool. Quantum Break. New game. No gameplay. Meh. 15 exclusive games and 8 new IPs. Thank goodness. Some new stuff. Some new interesting things. They're not sticking with mainly Call of Duty and Halo and they're actually getting some console exclusive games which I kinda like to see. Live action Halo written by Steven Spielberg. Now that is really cool. I like that bit of news. That really piqued my interest. It kind of got me back on the bandwagon thinking, yes, Microsoft is actually doing something right. <sighs> okay, and now we get on to the biggest depressing announcement that they left for last. And that is the Call of Duty Ghost reveal. And holy dong, that was the biggest pile of crap that I've ever seen in my life. The new innovative thing they have for Call of Duty is a dog. A dog. Like, what the flip? You can see the hair on the dog's nose, you can see the scars, and you can see a tattoo in the inside of its ear. When you're playing that game, will you be looking at a tattoo in the side of a dog's ear? No, you won't. Uh, what else? Did they have realistic fish. <laughs> hair on a guy's arm. Wow. <laughs> uh, they said they were actually going to do something new with this Call of Duty, and they really have not. They are saying that they are going to do potentially amazing things. They're going to have destructible maps and whatnot. Um, I could go back to Bad Company, which was released maybe four years ago, and get destructible environments in a game. Call of Duty is not doing well for itself, really. It is not going to be the same. Please do not buy into the hype of it all if you're watching this. It is not going to be the same. It, no, it is going to be the same. It's going to be more of the same crap but they are just slapping a new coat of paint over it. I really was not impressed by this reveal at all. PS3, PS4, sorry, done a lot more to pique my interest. And they've done a lot more things. They actually had gameplay. When I want to watch something about a games console, I want to see gameplay. I do not want to be sat watching 30 minutes of them talking about how I'm going to watch TV on an Xbox. I don't use that stuff. Why would I want to watch it? So now I have to wait another 20 days to actually decide if I want to buy an Xbox, if I want to buy a PS4. And then, actually, I might not even buy either one of them. Because, this is the game changer now, that the Xbox will not, this has been confirmed, will not have backwards compatibility. And, it also has been confirmed that the discs have a serial number, have a serial license, and so when you buy the disc, you have to input the serial license. And then if you buy that game second hand, then you have to pay more to actually get the game to run on your console again after that. They are not doing well for themselves. I don't see the point. They have to really impress me with some good games before I even consider buying this console. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. My name is Jack of Potato. I hope in three months time I will still be an Xbox gamer. We never know. As always, I will see you all next time.